All right, now let's bring in Florida Congressman Matt Gates. Congressman, thank you for joining us. So Trump explodes the ratings over at CNN. Management goes crazy. They like the ratings, but they are getting massive pushback. AOC says, I'm done with CNN. What are your thoughts? What are you hearing? Let's, uh, how about this? What are you hearing in the halls of Congress? Well, if there's an AOC boycott of CNN, my suspicion is it'll be short lived. I actually think this town hall was a win for both Donald Trump and CNN. President Trump showed a comfortable command of the room. He had an exquisite knowledge of the facts. He brought receipts to counter some of the false narratives that have been put out by a lot of mainstream media. And he interacted with people asking questions in a very warm and comforting and almost host like way. Meanwhile, could you imagine Joe Biden doing that? I mean, Eric, you and I both know Joe Biden could not do 90 minutes with Caitlin Collins without needing a nap in the middle and a drool rag at the end of it. Yeah. And in that or, respect, or, or, I, I or, conserv that, or conservative uh, moderator or host in, in, a, in a town hall. But can you imagine? He can do that long with Mr. Rogers. Look, look uh, you've, you've got in CNN. Uh, I think an opportunity. And so let's give credit where credit's due. Chris Lick didn't have to do this. And I think it's a good thing for the country and a good thing for CNN that they would platform people that they don't necessarily agree with. You platform people you don't agree with. You host debates on this show. Uh, you and I have even debated matters on this show. That's what the viewers and the American people deserve. Uh, one thing I think this also shows, Donald Trump should be in these debates. If there's anyone advising President Trump to stay out of debates, uh, I think that their argument was undermined considerably by the show he put on. Donald Trump is the greatest showman in American politics, and you've got to take the stage when you hold that mantle. You know, there's an interesting debate going on internally about, about those debates where, as you point out, someone from Trump camp, Donald Trump says, I don't need to do debates. I'm winning. Why would I debate? Also, though, Fox. Fox is, has been given by the RNC the first, the first and second debates, the, the, the presidential debates. So Trump may be, listen, let's be honest here, right, Matt? You and I, we both know Trump. Trump didn't do the CNN uh, town hall for Trump because he's going to be big no matter. He did the CNN, and he certainly didn't do it for CNN. He did the CNN debate to fire a shot right across the bow at 1211 Avenue of the Americas, Fox News. Uh, I do think that President Trump has seen his coverage constrained on Fox News. And, and in fact, his participation with this CNN forum, with many Newsmax forums, highlights the fact that he observes a fragmentation in corporate media right now. And you've got to go where the eyeballs are. It also shows a certain fearlessness with President Trump, where Ron DeSantis has been, I think, far more measured in only speaking to the friendliest of audiences and hosts. Uh, President Trump Trump showed a willingness to go out there and, and take it to a network that has not fairly covered him throughout his presidency. Uh, I also thought that th the crowd, the audience, really added so much. And there's a part of the campaigns that we see from people like Nikki Haley that I expect to see from Tim Scott. It's a little more Washington establishment. It's a little more antiseptic. Well, well, and there's well, a rawness to Trump that I love. I, I tweeted today about that. I've never seen more Karl Rove on Fox News than I have recently, going all the way back to 2016, when Carl was pushing low energy Jeb. Fox has made their decision to go back to the establishment wing of the party, and that's got to tick off people like you. Well, yeah, they used to be America first. Like it or not, they, like, they, they, they hate Trump so much over there, they can't even become, go back to the America first principles that made them so popular. Well, when you think back to 2016, President Trump really was omnipresent from Fox News to even Morning Joe and MSNBC. Right. And that made it so hard for other campaigns to even break through. I mean, Marco Rubio has said to me since then, gosh, you know, even when the field drew more narrow, I didn't have an opportunity to even break through and tell my story because everybody was covering Trump all the time. You talk in your monologue about this desire from Fox News to turn away from Trump, but I think that would be at their own peril because their viewers are interested in the former president's campaign and the ideas he's putting forward. And, you know, look, Eric, one thing you and I know uh, about the media business is that if you don't like it, just wait about 20 minutes and it'll probably change. Uh, I don't know that any of these dogmas or ideologies from executives in New York are set in stone. 
everybody's got to show their quarterly earnings. Everybody's got to show that they're accommodating the desires of the people who watch these networks. And my suspicion is people are going to cover the campaigns that are dynamic and active. And there is no they, more they, dynamic. They burn them, Matt. They burn their Trump. viewers, though. I'll tell you, if you look at that CNN town hall, you look at the ratings by quarter hour, which I get them. When CNN, when Trump was on CNN, they exploded on CNN. That was obvious. And fo- they just crashed, crashed on Fox. And they never went back to Fox afterwards. They came back and they came back to this network. We exploded right after the CNN uh, town hall happened. But but Fox didn't. So they've been burned. The viewers have been burned. I think they're tired of it. And I think they may have found a new home here uh, at Newsmax. Matt, before we go, just very quickly, give us a, an idea, the sense of of what's going on with the with the new expiration of the of the title 42 is congress ready for what we're about to to feel as a country with the, with the invasion on the southern border uh, this week, House Republicans passed H.R. 2 that if it were law today would absolutely stop the travesty on biblical proportion that we are seeing to humans at the southern border. It is the front end of the wave, unfortunately, though, Eric, because when all these hundreds of thousands of people get into the country, they're immediately going to start applying for the family reunification visas, and they're going to start pulling on that chain for chain migration. So for every one you see in these videos, there's another five, six, seven, ten aunts, uncles, cousins, family members that are going to be part of this mass migration of people into our country without permission, without consequence. And the first act someone takes stepping onto our land should not be the criminal violation of unlawful entry into this country. We have a plan, House Republicans. And by the way, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. We know what worked. It was all the stuff that we did during the Trump administration. And what you see now from Mayorkas and from Biden, it is not incompetence. It is on purpose. And the pain is the point. The pain for you and me and for America's workers. And they don't care. Indeed. Indeed. Pulling on America's chain. Couldn't say it better myself. Congressman Matt Gates, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eric.